So the first question um, is, what is PCI? PCI stands for Payment Card Industry. And the PCI standards were developed to protect cardholder data throughout the payment processing lifecycle. So we're going to go into more detail about the payment processing lifecycle later on in the module. For now, the key thing I want you guys to understand is that the standard applies to any entity that stores, processes, and or transmit cardholder data. So this includes any store or merchant that has like a POS system where you're using your card or any service providers that they, that they use to support their systems. All of these uh, individuals that are participating in the cardholder data processing or transmission, they are in scope for PCI. Let me give you one example, because I think examples make things easier for people to understand. Walmart, for example, is a merchant. So you hear, you'll hear the word merchant a lot in PCI, and that's essentially just a company or a store or something like that. Walmart is a merchant and they collect cardholder data in their stores because when you go to pay, you swipe your card and that means they're collecting your card data. So that means Walmart would be subject to PCI DSS compliance requirements. Any service providers that Walmart uses to store, process, and or transmit the data over their network would also be subject to PCI DSS compliance standards. So let me give you another example. If Walmart is using AT&T Business, for example, for any of their networking services that involves the transmission of cardholder data, AT&T would also be subject to the PCI compliance standards. And then any other banks or financial institutions that are storing, processing, and or transmitting cardholder data would also be subject to PCI compliance requirements. So there are three words you've heard me use many times, store, process, and or transmit. So those are three words you want to make sure you keep uh, handy anytime you're talking about PCI compliance requirements, because that's a key part of it. So let me summarize what we've just talked about here. To summarize, PCI standards are focused on the protection of cardholder data. So now let's talk about why PCI compliance is important. I'm sure you're kind of getting an idea of why it's important already, but I want to make sure that I synthesize that for you. The reality is that no one wants their card information, PIN number, or anything like that floating around on the dark web. And companies also don't want their customers' card data to be compromised because it impacts the integrity of their payment processing. Because if it's compromised, then someone uses, fraud, uses that um, card fraudulently, then that's something that they have to deal with as a customer or as a company. So simply put, merchants, financial institutions like banks and any payment brands don't want any fraudulent activity that can cause business losses for them. So that's really why it's important for the companies. Of course, it's also important for the customers because you don't have your card information just floating around. So on the screen, you'll see that I have two reasons that I've summarized. Um, essentially, when companies are PCI compliant, one, it improves the overall security of cardholder data, which is a good thing. And two, it reduces the potential for data breaches that can result in losses for both individuals and companies. So you can see the summary I have there on the slide. When a company adheres to PCI standards, they improve overall cardholder data security and they reduce fraudulent activity. So that's the whole reason why PCI compliance is important. Um, if you think about over the last several years, you're always hearing about breaches. One that just happened this year, I think um, T-Mobile had to settle for, was it $150 million or something because they had a data breach. So these are real numbers that can be real losses for companies. So it's important for them from a company perspective to make sure that they are PCI DSS compliant because they can protect cardholder data and they can also protect their own bottom line, okay? So that just gives you a quick um, overview of why PCI compliance is important. So now let's move on to the next topic. So in this lesson, we're going to review PCI certifications. 
There are many PCI certifications out there. And on the screen, I've listed the ones that are related to this course and honestly that are relevant for you based on you trying to or you working to become a PCI assessor. We have the PCI Professional, PCI Internal Security Assessor, the ISA, PCI Qualified Security Assessor, and the Associate AQSA. I'm going to include a link in the course website, um, probably either below this lesson or in the resources lesson. I'm going to include a link that goes into the details of each one because they have a website and I think it's better to point you to the website just in case they make any updates. But I'm going to go over um, a high level of overview of these four here, but for current information, I would recommend you go straight to their website. The PCI Professional Certification is actually an individual entry level certification that provides tools to the person getting certified to build a secure payment environment for their organization. So this is giving you that training on PCI, what it is, and just background information on how you can help develop a PCI compliant environment. This certification, you can actually enroll in it yourself. Um, the good thing is the requalification is every three years. So you don't have to do um, CPE credits every year or anything like that. Once you have the PCIP, it's every three years. And also, this certification stays with you. It's not linked to an organization. So the PCI professional is a, a certification that you can pay for and you can uh, keep. The PCI ISA is a company-sponsored certification. So this is one I was talking about um, a few weeks ago. This certification allows you to actually perform internal assessments. So as a PCI professional, you are not an assessor, but you can still get a job working in the compliance area for your company around PCI. For ISA, it actually allows you to perform internal assessments. So think of this certification as is the internal auditor certification for a company. The downside is it's tied to the company you work for and it's not transferable. So if you leave the company you work for and go to another company, this is not transferable. You have to go, the new company will have to apply for you. Okay. And the cert requalification for this is annual. So every year you need to get requalified as an ISA. So the next one is the PCI QSA. This is also a company sponsored certification, but it allows you to perform external assessments. So it's not just for your company. Um, the QSA company, so the QSA company is like an external auditor firm and they would um, sponsor assessors in the organizations to do QSAs. And those individuals can go out to other companies and perform external assessments, okay? Qualification here, the certification is also tied to the QSA company you work for. However, this one can actually be transferred to another company. So you can actually transfer your QSA certification from one company to another. It does require annual requalification as well. So you might be wondering why not do QSA instead of ISA? The thing is you have to kind of work for a QSA company before you can get um, sponsored for the PI, PCI QSA. And then the last one that we have is the PCI AQSA. So it's the Associate QSA. It's similar to the QSA, but this is more entry level. So it has fewer requirements um, of all the things you need to meet before you become an AQSA. So it's also tied to a QSA company. It can also be transferred if you move to another QSA company and it requires annual requalification. The only difference is if you have like a, they have a list of things you need to have before you're a QSA. You don't need to meet all of them as an AQSA. You can go entry level with AQSA. And as you gain the rest of the experience that they need, you can then go for your QSA. So that summarizes the certifications. We looked at the PCIP. ISA, QSA, and AQSA.